Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Hope everything's going well for you. Um, today we're going to be doing a couple things, but we're actually going to be finishing up a wrench that we started on Friday. Um, uh, this could be watched as a standalone video, or you can catch up and watch the first part. But we took a, a vintage auto wrench that was in pretty poor shape, and we uh, reshaped it and straightened it out and it got it into a usable wrench and now today today we're going to add some artistic flair to it and i was trying to figure out how i wanted to do this wrench and i've done a, a lot of different auto wrenches in different colors different styles i really love um fooling around with those type of wrenches but uh with this one i had this urge to make it look because we were talking about the hindenburg last week remember the airship the hindenburg and it made me think of lightning holes. I've always been a big fan of lightning holes. I've uh, done a few tools with lightning holes. I think it's just, I love the look. I love that uh, industrial avionic aviation look of early uh, aviation days when they used to put lightning holes in everything. Uh, going back to Flash Gordon, you remember the, the original Flash Gordon, his rocket ship had a whole bunch of those lightning holes in it. And I've, I've been a fan ever since, even building model airplanes and putting them in. And so it's just, I love the style. So today I want this wrench. I'm going to keep it industrial. I'm, I'm not going to add any color, I don't think. But what I want to do is make it look like something that would have been on the Hindenburg. Okay, so let's, what do you say we give that a shot? Let's get right okay, to it. Okay, for today's project, we are going to start off, we're going to finish up this wrench. We started with this, it was a mess. We uh, we trimmed it down, we got the jaws straight, we straightened it out. We did a whole bunch of work on here to get this back into a usable wrench. But today we're going to make it nice. We're going to make this attractive. Um, now, when I talked about this wrench last time when we, we took it from the bed to this, um, I mentioned that nobody uses these. These are kind of junk wrenches. And I did not mean the style wrench. I meant this, this actual type wrench. See, this is called the F style wrench and you could still get them today and they're made well. This is a diamond. This is a super hard steel, very strong, good wrench. And this is, if you wanted to use this type of wrench, this is the type you would get. This, you would get Crescent makes them. Uh, Billings used to make good ones. You know, they were high quality steel. The ones that you see that says auto or something like that, these were uh, inexpensive, inexpensive steel, low carbon steel. And my buddy Ken said, well, what if you uh, heat treated the steel to make it harder or stronger? Uh, unfortunately, uh, the steels can only be taken to certain strengths. You know, that's why Klein makes such good pliers because and channel lock because they start off with really good steel. Um, you, that's why the Chinese stuff is, is garbage a lot of times because they have, you know, junk, junk steel. So even though it looks the same and even though they temper it and everything, it just will never have the strength. So that's what the problem with these were. They were kind of a softer steel and, and they were made to be inexpensive and just like an emergency wrench. But if you were going to use this for a living, you would invest and get a good one. You know, this is a really nice, we're going to be doing this one. Uh, but anyway, so let's see what we can do with this. We've got a few things to talk about on how we're going to do this. Now, I've done a whole bunch of these type of wrenches, and there are so many different ways to embellish them, you know, with different colors in here that you can do. But um, I like to put some lightning holes in here. This is a, a really important. If you want to put holes in a line, it is so important that you get the holes absolutely accurate because your eye can tell as little as a couple thousands of an inch your eye could tell if one of those holes is not in line with the other ones and nothing will screw up a project quicker than if you haphazardly try and drill holes there and they're either not spaced correctly or they are not lined up correctly because your eye will be drawn to that and you'll say it looks amateur so that's really important and very hard to do so I'm going to show you the, the way that, you know, I have found different ways to get those holes straight and spaced correct. Okay, we're over here at the uh, milling machine, and we're going to use this to put the holes in in a uh, pattern going down the base, the uh, the body of the wrench. And first thing you do, and, and I'm just eyeballing this, I'm not doing this with any accurate precision, but what I want them to do is be lined up in the middle there. So uh, my vice is already trammed up correct to the table and now we're going to use the center drill 
And you could see here, I could just drill as many holes as I want going down the body of the wrench and it'll all be lined up perfectly as long as your vice is lined up to the table. Now, the other thing is to how often, how large you want those holes spaced apart, how, what distance. And it's important to remember that um, when you're spacing it apart, how big the hole is going to be. Small holes could be closer, but if they're larger holes, you want them to be farther apart. So that that's what we'll figure out. And I have these blocks here to stop so it don't press down. And you can see it makes easy work of lining up those holes. One of the nice things about having a, a mill table. I'm using the center drill to make just a pilot hole. Now what I'm doing is I'm spinning the knob 20 revolutions and then making another pilot hole. Okay, now we just used the milling machine to mark those holes to get them. And now I'll take it to the drill press and I will drill them out because they're deep enough that they won't be able to wander. And you can see they're perfectly straight, perfectly spaced apart. And if there's one tool that you don't have already, I urge you to buy a set of uh, center drills. If you don't have this, this will change your life. One of the best inventions ever for the shop, a center drill. They don't wander, they don't wobble, and uh, there's so many uses for them. So now we're going to drill this out, you know, and then we're going to do probably the same over here. It's a little harder on this one. We'll get to that later, but let's take this to the drill press now and enlarge those holes. And we're going to use a step drill. Now, if you don't have a step drill, uh, basically this is what they look like. This one here is an Irwin. This is a very good one. They're expensive, but even the cheap ones, the uh, Asian knockoff ones work great. Um, they're fantastic, especially for drilling in plastics, metals, and you'll see, and you can count the them to the next one. Um, let me show you how these work. Great tool to have. Now we're enhancing the pilot holes to make them a little deeper so the step drill will not wander. Now what we're going to do is, you see that first hole we made? We did that through trial and error using just very gentle taps until we got it right where we wanted. And then we set the drill press stop so that the drill, the step drill can only go down a certain amount. And now what we'll do is when we engage the holes, you can see here, we're going to go down until the drill press stop stops us from going any further. And we'll do that on both sides, creating a, a nice look. And it's important and always any drilling operation to use plenty of cutting fluid. Like Tap Magic, that stuff is fantastic. Has a little bit of a smell. You're probably better off using a fan when you use it, but it really works well. Gives you a nice hole. Look at that. Now, we want to see that little bit of a kind of countersunk area around it. And we're going to do both sides and it will come out perfectly even because of the drill press stop. Okay, here we go. Our holes are drilled. You can see how that adds a tremendous amount of visual interest to the wrench. Already, this it looks totally different than what we started with, right? And uh, you can see they're all lined up perfectly, and, and, and that is such an easy way to do it. Now, if you don't have a mill table, believe me, you're not a maniac, and a lot of people don't. If you don't have anything to space them off, you could do this easily, and I've done it many a times before, using a straight edge, just uh, taking a straight edge, running it down the middle here, put some magic marker or dicum in the middle there, take a scribe, scribe it straight down, and then taking your punch and carefully punching your increments, however far apart you wanted them, whether it be an inch and a quarter or, you know, whatever you wanted them apart, and that's how you could do it that way. But it's so much easier with the mill table. If you have it, you might as well use it. Now we have to do something uh, to put holes in here. And again, this one's a tough one too, and I'll show you why. Now, for the slide, I was uh, contemplating putting a descending size hole. So, uh, in other words, on the top here, I would have a larger hole, and then a little bit further down, a medium size hole, and then a smaller hole. And what's important to remember about this, and it's good to use Magic Marker when you're doing this, because first of all, Magic Marker, it wipes right off when you're finished, and uh, you could take it off with just some regular uh, isopropyl alcohol, one, two, three. But what's good about this is you can figure out how it looks, you know, the holes, uh, the marker actually looks almost like a hole from a distance, so you can figure out what you want, your proportions. But what's important to remember is that these holes have to be spaced now, properly. Here's your standard set of dividers, okay? Now let's say we wanted these holes, you see how these are spaced apart, like this far apart? Now, if I didn't have a mill table, I could have just put the dicum here, and what I could have done is I could have just walked it from one to the other, making a little mark as I walked down. That would give me a perfectly same spaced, right? 
Now, you can't do that when you have larger holes. And I'll show you. This is interesting. I found this out, obviously, for the hard way. Um, if I was to take and say, I want these holes to be three quarters of an inch apart, let's say, in that, right? So you mark one here, you mark one here, you mark one here. They look, uh, they don't look evenly spaced because what happens is you want the space to between the edges here to be equal, not between the centers. And because this is a, a smaller hole, a larger hole, when you make this, if you were to just space off three separate spaces, the larger holes on these two would make this space shorter than this one here, and it looks off. I messed up on doing that and learning the hard way. So now what you have to do is you drill your hole, then you measure from here to here, and that's how you do it. Now we used our center drill. You can see how perfectly lined up they are, but notice the difference between hole number one and two and two and three. They're different. Okay, here we go. Now you see how they look evenly spaced, and it's... Uh... It adds, again, visual interest to this. And you can see here now when we put it together, we got a lot going on here, you know? Now we went from a simple wrench to something that looks like it belonged on the Hindenburg. How cool is that, huh? Okay, now we can start getting rid of and, and cleaning it up, you know, now that we got all the rough holes made. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what it originally looked like and then what it looked like before we did the embellishments. We're calling this wrench done. My Hindenburg wrench. Enjoyed doing this. This was something I just, I left the inside, the traditional silver that came from the factory, that forged color. It's a little bit darker. Uh, you can see here, did it in a satin finish. Everything out, all the scratches now are blended. If the back is polished, as we always like to do, is, you know, the top polished out that rail and just a nice soft wrench everything matches up nice it works well put the little space of washer brass in there and the lightning holes going up and down just isn't that such a difference what a difference what a nice looking wrench right i mean now you could also add whatever color you would like inside there which would really make it pop but uh let's check this out see how it operates okay now uh one thing i want to point out uh sometimes with these wrenches if, if you take too much off the rails or something you'll get excessive slop in here now a little bit of slop is is necessary for these wrenches to work well because just the the action of the wrench they're supposed to lock up onto the the nut or the bolt that you're using and, and it uses that kind of a little bit of slop in there if you have it too tight i find they don't work and they're hard to engage i'll show you what i mean uh, this one here, we have a little bit of slop. I told my buddy Alex Schoenberg, special shout out to Alex. If you want to tighten it up, what you do is when this piece is off, you run a thin lining of JB Weld on the inside. And then what you do is you file it down to make a custom fit. But of the wrenches I've done that with, it doesn't operate any better. I'll show you what I mean. When you put the wrench onto the nut like this here, okay, you want enough that uh, it's going to engage the nut without slipping. So here we have a good fit on there, right? Now, when I bring it around again, you see how that slides on nice? Again, engage, disengage, same thing here. And another thing is, you see we cut that tip off, right? There's no sense to have that kind of tip. This is a big bolt for a small 9-inch wrench. And look how much engagement I have. I can go, you know, look at that. I still got so much extra. Why would you need that extra, you know, it just don't make sense. So this is a perfect fix for these wrenches, cut that little end off. It works so much better. And these do work well, especially if you have them set up right, you know? Nice little wrench. Okay, so in closing, I'm quite happy with the way today's uh, project came out. And also, you know, it's not about the wrench that we're doing, it's all about the practice. You know, every project you do, you get better. It's just, you can't help it. You know, you learn little things, little mistakes that you've made and hopefully you can remember a lot and not repeat them like I do every once in a while. That's why you got to stay current. You got to stay in the shop because if you stay away too long, you start repeating the mistakes that you learned already years ago. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Bye-bye. Last night when I was editing the video, I saw that the, you know, I lost some of the black 
in here, I guess when I was doing the operation. So I, I re-blued the black to give it that contrast that we wanted. And I don't know why that happens sometimes to silver. Uh, you know, the, the black that's original factory forging just wears down. So I, I re-blued it there and it gives it more contrast. So what do you think? Do you like it better like this here? It's uh, a little bit more contrast. Again, the industrial look we got going on. You can see the circles. I like it. So there we go. This one's finished now for good.